I'm in Massachusetts right now. Well, technically I'm still in New York, but I'm on a trail to the tallest waterfall in Massachusetts. And I've been here a bunch of times and the geology has always really interested me. So I wanted to do a video about it. The trail is really beautiful here. It goes along this creek, Bashbish Creek, I believe it's called. So this creek was likely formed at the end of the last ice age about 12,000 years ago. During the Wisconsin glaciation, a huge ice sheet called the Laurentide Ice Sheet covered up a huge part of North America, and it was at its most southern extent about 18,000 years ago. At this point, it began to melt and it retreated back north. As it retreated and melted, it left behind many interesting features on the landscape. The ice had carved valleys, dropped large amounts of sediment, and left behind huge chunks of rock called glacial erratics, and so much more. When you look at the rocks in the stream, you can find lots of pieces of the local bedrock, but you can also find some pieces of the rock that are not consistent with the geology of this location. These are pieces of rock that were carried and dropped here by the ice. As I walked along the trail, I walked into a gorge towards the waterfall. You can see as I get further in the trail how I'm, ooh, I'm out of breath. The gorge was carved by the glacier and then further eroded by the water of the creek flowing through the valley over the sediment and the bedrock. The mountains and the ridges surrounding me were more resistant to that erosion and held their ground better than the rocks that were broken down and taken away. I'm about to be at the waterfall and it just started snowing. I see a few little flakes of snow passing by my face. Beautiful day. Oh my god, it's so pretty! Wow. Are you ready? This gorgeous waterfall brings me back to what I was saying about glacial meltwater channels. The ice sheet went through warmer and cooler time periods, and in the warmer ones, it sort of melted in bursts, where there was likely an insane amount of meltwater flowing off of the ice. All of this meltwater had to be incredibly abrasive on the bedrock, forming dramatic waterfalls like this one. Just imagine that gorge above the waterfall completely filled with ice and water plunging down into this pool of water, then carving out a smooth channel into the bedrock like it's nothing. Like I said, these rocks aren't the softest rocks ever, so the force of the water had to be pretty intense. Downstream of the waterfall, you can see a few more smaller plunge pools similar to the one at the base of the falls. So what happened before this ice sheet for all of these rocks to end up here in the first place? This brings me back a little bit farther in time, over 450 million years ago, when there was a mini continent making its way towards ancient North America. At this time, there weren't even any woody plants yet on the planet, and there's still millions of years before the dinosaurs even show up. This mini continent had sediments weathered and eroded away off of the land into the ocean, forming layers of silt and clay deposits at the bottom of the ocean. When this microcontinent collided with Laurentia and that ocean closed up during the Taconic orogeny, those sediments were dragged miles underground and subjected to intense heat and pressure. They were metamorphosed and changed into a rock called schist. We call these rocks alochthonous because they did not originate at their current location. All of those clay and silt sediments were changed into new minerals like muscovite, chlorite, quartz, and even garnet. Garnet tells us a lot about the conditions that this rock was under because it is an index mineral that indicates temperatures of at least 550 degrees Celsius. As hot as that is, this rock is actually a medium grade metamorphic rock. There are much more intense conditions that rocks can go through during metamorphism. So if these rocks had to be miles under the surface, what were they buried under? Well, at the time that this was happening, there were gigantic mountains at the surface. And we don't really know exactly how big these mountains were, but we can assume that they were pretty big because there's a lot of sediment deposited to the west of here in what's called the Queenston Delta. Over time, uplift and erosion brought the metamorphic rocks up to the surface, so geologists could decipher them to discover their past. When you look at the many broken up chunks of rock here at the waterfall and also along the trail, you can see the layers in the rocks. This is called foliation, which is when platy minerals like chlorite and muscovite line up with each other to form layers. 
The rocks also have other cool deformation textures like the folded quartz that you see in almost every rock. The quartz shows up as a raised, lumpy texture because it is much more resistant to weathering than the other minerals present in the rock. The garnet isn't visible as much as the other minerals, but I did find some porphyroblasts to look at through my hand lens, where I could also see some orange rusty weathering going on, since this type of garnet is very iron rich. I could spend hours looking at all these fascinating textures because it feels like you're going back in time and seeing what it was like thousands of feet into the crust millions of years ago. 